Hello and welcome to this Dr. Rossmas key skill video on finding the inverse function for a linear expression. Now what do we mean by an inverse function? Now we've already counted functions in the videos previously on this, but remember what a function is, that you can have some kind of input, let's say free, and it does something to that input and spits out an output. Let's just say that output was seven. It could be that this function doubles the input and adds one to give you the seven. Now what the inverse function is, is to basically do the reverse. So if I took that seven and I put it through the inverse function, which we write as f to the minus one, that's not a power of minus one, it kind of just means the inverse function. Somewhere you might have seen this, by the way, is like with sine to the minus one, when we do inverse sine, that minus one there doesn't mean a power of minus one, where we do one over sine or something, it just means inverse sine, just like this means inverse. So this means the inverse function, and that would get us back to the free. So the inverse function gets us back from the output back to the input. Now, the way I do this is to first replace f of x with y. So we just write y is equal to 2x plus 3 over 4. So step one, you just replace f of x with y. This is just for convenience, that's all. Now let's think about what we're doing. This is our output of the function, the f of x, and the x is the input of our function. Remember, x is the input of the function. Now we want to find the inverse function that gets us the input in terms of the output. So if we've currently got the output y in terms of the input x, we want the input x in terms of the output y to do the reverse. So we just need to make x a subject. So step two is to make x a subject of the formula. And we explore how to change the subject to the formula in other videos. So do watch those if you don't know what I mean by that. So how do we get x on its own? Well, let's think what's happening to x. It's been multiplied by two, we're adding three, then we're dividing by four. We undo the last thing that was done to it. We undo the divide by four by multiplying both sides of the equation by four. Remember, whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to do the same to the other. So the y times four is four y. And timesing this by four gets rid of the over four, leaving two x plus three. Now let's think what we do next. X has been multiplied by two, then we're adding three. We want to undo the last thing. We want to undo the plus three by minusing three from each side. So that becomes four y minus three, and that just becomes two x, because the minus three gets rid of the plus three. And then finally, x has been multiplied by two, so we divide both sides by two, and we get four y minus three over two equals x. Now, generally, we want functions to be in terms of x. We want the input to be x and then have an expression in terms of x. So all we need to do now is to replace the y with x. So any y you have, you replace with x. And the other side, we're just going to write f minus 1 of x. So f minus 1 of x, the inverse function where the input is x, will be this, but just with the y replaced with x. So it will be 4x minus 3 over two. So that is the final answer. Now we could check that this works. So for example, if we did f of one, that would be two times one, which is two, plus three, which is five, divided by four. So we get five over four. So we need to check that if we did the inverse function, f minus one of five over four, it would get us back to one. So if we do f minus one, of 5 over 4. If we put that into our new function, 5 over 4 times by 4 is 5, minus 3 is 2, divided by 2 is 1, and indeed we do get 1. So doing the original function gets us from 1 to 5 over 4, and doing the inverse function, f minus 1, of the 5 over 4 gets us back to 1. It works.